next maths lesson. OK, so it's Friday the 29th of January and our learning objective today is to multiply and divide by seven. So if you could pause the video now and write today's date and learning objective and underline these. OK, brilliant. So let's review what you've been learning so far this week. Um, you've been looking at the nine times table and learning your nine times table facts. So have a look at the number tracks below and see if you can fill in the missing numbers using your knowledge now of the nine times table. Pause the video while you do that. OK, so let's see how you got on. So the first one we're going to have a look at the top one here and we need to look at do we think the numbers are going up in the nine times table or are they getting smaller and going down in the nine times table? So I can use the numbers 45 and 54 here to help me and I can see that the numbers are going up. So I know that the number before the number 27 is going to be nine less and I know that the number after the number 27 is going to be nine more. So let's see how you got to mark yours as you go along. So the first number in our number tracks is nine, 18, 20, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63 and 72. Well done. And you should have noticed that the second number tracks here, the numbers are getting smaller. So we're going down in the nine, nine times table. So I could have looked at the first number here and I would have realised that this number is going to be nine more than 99. And this number here is going to be nine less than 99. So let's see how you got on. It's 108, 99, 90, 81, 72. 63, 54 and 45. So well done if you, um, you could use your knowledge of the nine times table to fill those in correctly. So let's look at the seven times table. So let's start off by looking at the hundred square here and we're going to highlight the multiples of seven. So the multiples, uh, any numbers that are in the seven times table. So the first one we're going to start with is the number seven and then we need to count on seven more each time. So the next number, if I counted on seven more, would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven more be 14 and seven more than 14 is 21. See so if you can write these numbers down as we go along. Maybe you can write them down even quicker than I highlight them. So the next one would be 28. Seven more than 28 to be 35. Seven more than 35 would be 42. Seven more than 42 to be 49. 7 more than 49 is 56, 7 more than 56 would be 63, 7 more than 63 would be 70, 7 more than 70 would be 77, 7 more than 77 to be 84, and then 7 more than 84 to be 91, and then finally, 98. So the question at the bottom there says, what do you notice about the seven times tables? Just pause the video and do you notice anything about, are there any patterns in the seven times table? Um, particularly, there's a, I, I'll give you a hint, anything to do with the odds and even numbers. So pause the video now while you have a look at these. OK, so um, if you might have noticed that if you look, the, so the first a multiple of seven is an odd number and then the next multiple is an even number and it carries on pa a pattern like that so we've got an odd number an even number an odd number an even number odd even odd even odd even odd even okay so let's um let's just chant through our seven times table just to really help us remember it so i'm going to move the answers here so you can either do this with your eyes closed or your eyes open depending on if you need that bit of help there so let's start one times seven is seven two times seven is 14 three times seven is 21 four times seven is 28 
5 times 7 is 35, 6 times 7 is 42, 7 times 7 is 49, 8 times 7 is 56, 9 times 7 is 63, 10 times 7 is 70, 11 times 7 is 77, and 12 times 7 is 84. Okay. You can, re you can rewind that if you want to keep practicing that seven times table or pause the video to practice for longer. Okay, so Rosie uses number pieces to represent a calculation. I want you to think about looking at the um, representation here. What calculation do you think she has represented? Perhaps you could write down the calculation that you think Rosie has represented. Pause the video while you do that. OK, so let's see what we think. So Rosie has, I can see that she's got four groups here and in each group there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the first one, four groups of seven. So I think that Rosie has represented the calculation four times seven. OK, so let's just think about the multiplication first of all. So four times seven. So if I counted in groups of seven again, so we can do seven, 14, 21 and 28. So 4 times 7 is 28. Let's add that into our answer here. Okay, so now we can write a division, division question using this. So um, altogether, we now know that there are 28, uh, 28 little dots in there in those pictures. So there's 28 altogether. And when we divide them into four groups, because we had four groups, remember, we end up with seven in each group. So we can write a multiplication for this representation and we can write a division. So our stem sentence here to think about today, we use this word inverse quite a lot. And I want you to remember that multiplication and division are inverse operations. So say that sentence with me now, multiplication and division are inverse operations. Brilliant. OK, so underneath, let's look at this one. So let's see how many groups have we got all together. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups again there. So seven groups and this time there are four in each group. So I can do seven multiplied by four. So it's actually We've used this exactly the same numbers, but we you can see how it's represented in two different ways. So seven times four, it's also 28. And then this can be written, the division, the inverse is 28 divided by seven equals four. OK, so let's have a look at the visual representation we have got here. So it says complete the missing numbers. So here we've got some heptagons um, and I want you to complete. The, let's have a look at the sentence we need to complete here. So it says there are some thing heptagons. So we can see that there are four heptagons. There are four heptagons on this and each Heptagon has how many sides? Well, a heptagon, I know, has seven sides. And we're learning about our seven times table, aren't we? So we could count them if we need to double check, but each of these shapes has seven sides. There are something sides all together. So this is where we need to count how many sides all together. But now we can count in sevens. We can think about counting. We can either count each individual side or we can use our knowledge that this shape here has seven sides. This one has, oh, no, it doesn't have eight. It has seven as well. This one has seven as well. And this heptagon has seven as well. So now I can count in sevens to work out. So I've got seven, 14, 21, 28. So there are 28 sides all together. Okay, so just have a look at the calculations below. So remember we said about uh, multiplication being continuous um, addition. We talked about that last week in our six times table. So can you have a go at filling out the addition using what we've just learned about the visual representation, representation and the two multiplications that you could write using this representation as well? Pause the video while you do that. Okay, yes, so seven, add seven, add seven, add seven is equal to 28. And we then can do this, write this in a more efficient method where we can say four times seven, oh, not four times four, four times seven equals 
28 and we can use the same numbers but change them round to the other way so that we can say 7 times 4 equals 28. Brilliant. So we can use different methods to represent calculations. So here you can see we've got a pictorial um, representation, we've got an array here, and we've got two bar models. What calculations are being represented in these pictorial um, representations? Yes, it's the same again, isn't it? So it's seven times four, okay? and four times seven. But I wonder what divisions are being represented. What division is it? So we can also use the inverse to write the division. So we've got 28 divided by four equals seven and 28 divided by seven equals four. So have a really good look at these, how these are represented in different ways. So we've got the bar model of um, seven groups of four here equal 28, or in this one, we've got uh, four groups of seven equal 28, or we can think about those as a division. So 28 divided into four groups, and there are seven in each group, or 28 divided into seven groups, and there are seven in each group, okay? And then we've got the seven sides of each shape and they're four shapes all together. And then we've got the array here where we've got four rows of seven there. So I want you to now have a go. What methods could you use to represent seven times six in different ways? So the calculation is seven times six. I want you to pause the video while you represent that in different ways. So think about again, use an array, uh, maybe a pictorial method and a bar model if you can. So if you're seven times six, off you go. Okay, so let's see what you came up with. So, <clears throat> your pictorial. Of course, you may have drawn something completely different. I've got some little numicon blocks here. You could have used um, different shapes again. You could have used hexagons to represent shapes with six sides or um, heptagons. But so here I've got seven times six and six times seven. The next one, I did some arrays just using little dots. So I've got seven times six. There are seven different rows and six then in each in each column. And then six times seven, I've got six rows this time and seven then in each column. Or I could have used those bar models again. So six times seven so there's six groups of seven here and that equals 42 or seven times six there are seven groups of six okay and they also equal 42 so can you write the inverse calculations so the inverse calculations would have been 42 divided by six equals seven or 42 divided by seven equals six so well done if you managed to find, uh, draw all those different ways of representing that calculation. Okay, so let's have a look at this number problem together, word problem together. So seven children share 56 stickers. How many stickers will they get each? Use a bar model to solve the problem. Um, you could also use an array that you don't have to just use a bar model. That was just there to give you an idea. So let's have a look at the key information. So the key information is there are seven children and they are sharing 56. That word share is quite important as well because it helps us to um, understand what type of problem we're doing here. So seven children share 56 stickers. How many will they get each? So our calculation is going to be 56 divided by 7 equals. OK, so 56 divided by 7 equals. If you want to have a go at this on your own, you can pause the video now while you do that, or you can follow with me. Um, use this stem sentence at the bottom to help you answer the problem. So the children will get however many stickers each. I know this because 56 divided by 7 equals, and I can prove this using, this is where you might use your array or your um, bar model to help you. So I'm going to show you how I might solve this. So 56 shared into seven different groups. So here I've got my seven rows here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And when I share 56 into seven rows, I end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in each row. So 56 
divided by seven equals eight. OK, and I can I can check that by using the inverse so I can count eight lots of seven and hope that that um, equals 56. So eight sevens would be 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56. So I know that 8 times 7 equals 56. So I've used the inverse to check. And then my bar model might have looked like this. So um, 56 shared into seven equal groups and there are eight in each group there. OK, so here's your checkpoint question for today. I want you to write all the number facts you can make using this array. So it can be division and multiplication facts. And can you draw a bar model um, to help you show your answer? So pause the video while you have a go at that question. OK, so the bar, the, the number facts that you should have come up with would be um, nine times seven equals 63. Then 7 times 9 equals 63. 63 divided by 7 equals 9. And 63 divided by 9 equals 7. And if you drew the bar model, your bar model would look a little bit like this. OK. You may have drawn a slightly different bar model if you did 63 um, divided into seven groups, you would end up with seven groups of nine at the bottom here. So there would there would, would be two possible ways to draw your bar model. OK, so if you got that right, you can start on step two if you're feeling confident. If you're not quite confident yet, start on step one and see how you get on moving through the questions. Um, remember, you don't need to do every step. So here is step one for you today. And step two questions today. Remember to um, show some of your working out if you need to using those bar models. Step three questions for today. Some problem solving questions. Again, if you want to please make sure you answer your questions by using um, the stem sentence. I know this because. Digging deeper questions. And here are your answers today. Step one answers. Step two answers. Step three answers. And the digging deeper answers. OK, brilliant year for some fantastic maths again today. Um, I look forward to seeing you in your next lesson.